<laughs> All right. So we'll call the uh, select board meeting for Wednesday, August 4th, uh, 2021 to order. Uh, the meeting is being recorded as well as broadcast live. Um, in attendance is myself, David Phil, uh, Joyce Chunglo, Jane Nevinsmith, Amy Parsons, and John Muskevitz. And all of those will be taken via roll call for the meeting. Um, first order of business is the consent agenda. Uh, we don't have any warrants this, this uh, meeting. We have a cultural council appointment of Lou Abbott. And we have Old Hadley Cemetery and Plainville Cemetery, project extension request and additional work at Old Hadley Cemetery. And that's to Gravestone Services of New England. And that's it for consent. So moved. Second. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. And if there's no further discussion, Jennifer. We'll call vote Phil. Yes. Chung or Chunglo. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Muscovitz. Yes. Parsons. Yes. Thank you. All right. And uh, we're going to go a little out of order here since town council is uh, here. Just for everyone at home, uh, we had an executive session at from 6 to 6.30 prior to this uh, open meeting to discuss uh, the status of North Hadley Village Hall. So that's why we're starting a little bit late tonight. Um, but we're going to jump down to 5.2, open meeting complaint. Um, I'll let Jeff correct me if I get any of this wrong, but uh, the open meeting complaint that was filed, uh, town council asked the attorney general's office for an extension, which was granted. And as of right now, we have a draft response to that, but we're not ready for um, uh, to put that out there as a final at this point. Um, we'll probably hold another meeting on the 11th, I believe it is, um, in order to meet that deadline and uh, get that closed out. And did I get all that right, Jeff? You so that ahead. would be next week, David? I thought we were meeting every other week. We are, but we have a deadline from the Attorney General's office. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Chairman, if you would like, um, you could, the, the board could authorize me uh, to work with you and uh, the town manager, I, I strike that administrator to to draft a response. I, I do have a response drafted. I, I think it's a fairly um, easy and, uh, and and quick response. The response would be, um, as you probably know, the open meeting law complaint and it was an allegation that essentially that the board had met prior to um, its regularly scheduled meeting in a secret or, you know, w w without a, a duly noticed meeting uh, because at least one board member had indicated that there were, that you were going to discuss uh, uh, the reduction of the conservation commission during an open meeting. Um, and that uh, I guess the, 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 the complaint goes that because there wasn't that much um, discussion that you must have already made a decision. Um, and, and in my opinion, uh, a lot of those allegations are simply not part of the open meeting law. And um, we have a, a number of cases that we've cited, wherein even even if they are within the, the scope of the meeting, open meeting law, which if you met uh, without a duly posted meeting, um, th th they have to have more heft than that. The mere fact that somebody says, well, yeah, you didn't discuss it much and made a determination that you, you, you got to do more than that. You got to at least have some allegations in there. And I've drafted my response along those lines. So what we typically do is we typically um, have you um, authorize town council and it's usually the chair of, the, of whatever board it is together with the town administrator work with me. And I will put that all into a, a, uh, a response and send it out to the attorney general by August 14th. I don't think that you need to have any further um, any further meetings, if you don't want to, certainly willing to, to get that. And you can, we can talk about it, uh, on August 11th, if you'd like. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. If the board wants to authorize that, I'm happy to work with you and get it done and, and save the meeting. I move. We do that. I'll yeah. second that. The letter right. was good that you drafted. So, and there was so, no prior to it, so I'm not too worried about it. So that was a motion by Jane, I believe, and a second by Amy. Yeah. Okay. 
And then um, just before we vote, uh, Jeff, uh, there were some questions about, um, you know, I guess why is town council uh, drafting response uh, versus previous open meeting complaints that we've had in the past that were submitted to the town clerk versus, versus the attorney general's office. So could you maybe just touch on that of, of why, you know, we're dealing with the attorney general's office versus just the, I guess, the more informal process of the town clerk and the board responding? Well, I mean, frankly, that's, that is the process is that a, the town clerk is, is provided with the open meeting law complaint with a copy to the AG. Um, that that's what the law requires. Now, um, perhaps in the in the past, there have been situations where either the the the, the complainant uh, didn't realize that they had to send a copy to the AG, um, or they didn't, and uh, and it was taken care of um, from the from the from the board. Now, uh, it's it's standard operating procedure for once the board gets it, they confer with town council, and town council I, I drafted, you know. We, we, our, our office has probably drafted hundreds, maybe even thousands of these over the years. Um, and we work with, with the boards, but it's, it is copy to the AG. And what will happen is we will send over a, a copy to the complainant and then we will uh, copy the AG and the AG will, will eventually send out a letter saying on thus and such a day, they, the, the board responded to your open meeting and law complaint if you um, if you have any more if you would like to appeal that determination or you're not satisfied with the board's response then they have to make the formal request to the AG and make a open meeting law complaint with the AG this is this is just standard operating procedure here okay all right thank you um, any other discussion on that before we vote uh, Jennifer roll call please Brooke Hallfield? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Skevitz? Yes. The Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. And then, uh, Jeff, do you have anything else uh, that you're here for? Or I don't that think it? so. Carolyn, I think that's it. Right? Okay. If you guys, if All you right. don't need me, I will sign off. All right. Have a good night. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you guys. We'll see you later. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Jeff. Jeff. Good night. All right, so I'm going to jump back up to public comments. Uh, 15 minutes, limit your comments to three minutes each so that other may, others may have an opportunity to speak. If anyone's here for public comments, turn your camera on, wave at us. And if you guys can help me out in case I don't see it. I actually don't see anybody raising their hands. I don't think there is anyone here. All right, last call for public comments before we move on. Okay, we'll keep going. Um, we have under old business 5.1 additional renewal appointments. Uh, the select board is asked to reappoint the attached list for additional FY22 appointments. And as soon as the Attachment opens here, I'll read what they are. We have uh, Forest Fire Warrant, uh, Warden, uh, Chief Bank Nable as the Warden, and Evan Bryant as the Deputy Warden, and that's for a one-year period, it looks like. Uh, Historical Commission, Courtney Meyer, uh, that's a three-year position. Andrew Bombardier for ZBA, that's a three-year period and John Kakoski as an alternate for the ZBA, and that's a three-year period. So moved. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any other discussion on those appointments? Jennifer? Roe call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right, and then, so we have a seven o'clock um, appointment. Uh, Jane, do you think we can fit the Golden Court discussion into about 15 minutes? At least less, probably. All right, so uh, Jane, I'll let you take it because you were working with uh, Senator Comerford and uh, Rep. Kerry. So I have been working with both Senator Comerford and uh, Representative Kerry because of complaints that 
everybody knows there have always been long going complaints. So here's my written statement. So I am concerned that some of our most vulnerable residents are not being treated as human beings. They're talked down to and disrespected. The housing authority, especially since the state encouraged centralization of management has become less available to our residents. There's no longer a full-time person in the office. There is not an on-site maintenance person. The housing authority during COVID reduced repairs to what they considered an emergency. There is no transparency on how the organization runs. There are many rules and when residents try to, for instance, file a grievance, the written protocol from the state, it is not followed. Specifically, there have been several grievances filed in the last month and they have not been acknowledged. The Massachusetts Union of Public Housing Tenants says, public housing developments can be communities to be proud of. Until the day when affordable housing is a right of all, public housing must be maintained as a precious resource. Public housing residents have the intelligence and commitment to be active partners in the management of their developments. And that active tenant involvement is essential for creating positive public housing communities. We believe that while maintaining independence, tenant organizations and management can build relationships of mutual respect and cooperation, and that working together, they can eliminate the unfair stigma under which public housing suffers. It further says in towns with public housing, either the town manager, mayor, or the select board is supposed to be represented on the tenants association. I would like to be appointed to that position to help the tenants create an association and have better relationships with the management and hopefully improve quality of life for the residents. Uh, Jennifer or Carolyn, do we have an, an active housing authority anymore for Hadley Housing Authority? I know the maintenance or the management is over to the Amherst Housing Authority, but is there so I did look into that today and I, and I um, went downstairs and I do not think they have met regularly. So, and it was unclear as to um, when they have met and who is actively attending the meetings. So um, it's a good question. And I, um, I think it's a great opportunity to maybe uh, bring them in and talk with them. That would be my recommendation. So this is unrelated to those people because they are appointed or elected, I'm not sure which, but this would be made up of tenants as a, mm -hmm. like a union to negotiate with the management as opposed to our board who reports to us theoretically about what's going on there. Yeah, I okay. got and so they're position to sit on that board. Didn't hear you, John. There was one elected position that sits on that board? No, they're all elected, John. Except for the state appointed person. Correct. Yeah, and, Am and, and how did Amherst get involved in it anyway? And do we have any say so in it anymore? Well, they that's got where it seems to have gone south, and why I would like to get involved and help the tenants get organized to have a voice in what happens where they live. So right now there is no tenants association at all, right? That or is, there is. Correct. Okay. That is right. no association. So okay. back in the day of the history, there was, there is a housing authority that these are elected officials each year. There's somebody that is elected. Um, a few years ago, there was a problem over at Golden Court that didn't seem to get resolved with the housing authority from here. Uh, the our elected officials. The state is much involved in it because it is a federal housing authority. Um, so they... No, it's a state. This one, Golden it's Court state. state. It's a state, but they somehow had Amherst get involved with being the authority over us because we didn't hire somebody else to fill that other position that was there. I think that what happened was the state was trying to save money and they encouraged areas to have regional housing uh, management for projects. And very few places have actually done that. The Hadley 
Amherst Belchertown is one that has. And it's, it's really limited what's going on in Hadley for our residents. Okay, so then. Are we getting any notification from Amherst of what they're doing or what they're planning over there? Very little. I have gone to several meetings and they have in the past said, oh yes, we're gonna do this and this and they have not produced. I know there was a lot of trouble when they finally had that water main break over there and Amherst had to make the decision to repair it, but they've got a lot of other issues over there, uh, building and land wise and utility wise. So. And that's why I'd like to put somebody who can report directly to the select board and to the town actively involved in, in creating a tenants association to help the people. So are we looking? I think we have to check the elected officials and maybe just have one member. Uh, there's really nothing we can do there. That's the problem. We've been through this a couple times already. This is a different approach. This is not the board having nothing to do. This is organizing the tenants so that the tenants have a say with management. Okay. Well, I mean, if someone wants to make that motion, I don't have any issue with you representing the, the select board on the tenants uh, association. I'll make that motion that Jane represent the select board on the uh, tenants association for a golden court. Second that. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Amy. And then uh, Jane, do we need to put out an announcement or or is there a number of tenants or is it all the, all the tenants? I will, I will deal with organizing them. Okay. Thank okay. you. All right, Gen uh, Jennifer, could you get a roll call please? Roll call Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Okay. I'd still, Caroline, you're still going to look into the development of the elected officials? Yeah, I, be, I actually began some of that today and had to finish up some other things for tonight. But um, I'm, I'm trying to learn about the dynamics because I'm so used to working with housing authorities from my previous job. So it, you are very unique. So I'm trying to learn more about um, the role of the Hadley Board Housing Authority versus Amherst, Amherst supervising it and running it. So I, I, it's a learning curve for me as I learn, I'll definitely share that with you, the history. You know, I'm for the regional thing, but you know, it, it sounded like the state just passed the buck off to Amherst and Amherst has kind of taken over, they haven't really taken over, but they've taken over Hadley and Belchertown now. I, I've been a little bit informed about it, but not completely. Well. When we had that water main break, it was it last winter or the winter before, uh, nobody from Amherst Housing Authority would answer the phone. And, we, you know, it was, Scott was working on it. Um, Chris was working on it. And, and we, we called the police department and went through the emergency contact book. None of the numbers were, were active. Nobody returned the phone calls. So there's, there's a lot of work to be done there. Yeah, th there was a major problem there that morning, for sure. Could, could yep. we get our uh, electives uh, involved in this to see just what what actually took place and what we can do to just bring us back into Hadley overseeing our own town and not having Amherst oversee us. Um, let's see what we can do about that. You, know, you want to guys want to invite them to our, our next meeting if, if time allows. Certainly. Sure. Okay. Is there, uh, they've actually got a, a, a housing committee. So right. correct reports to their, their uh, council. So, and David, can I clarify, you're talking about the Hadley Board H Housing Authority. Yeah, I think, that's, I think that's the first place to start with. And then if we need to have Amherst come to a meeting, we can do that. Okay, anything else on Golden Court? Can I add something to it? <laughs> My name's Judy Roncalli. Um, I just... <laughs> I would just like to make clear um, that one person on the board is um, is assigned by the governor. The other ones are voted in by the town. Correct. 
Okay. Was was there some other confusion? It seems like I heard something else, but I don't remember what right now. No. Back in the day, it was Mr. Oh, it was Connie Mitch's um, dad. Right. That that was uh, the on there as the appointed one from the governor, and then they appointed Connie. And I don't know if they appointed anybody after Connie. Yes, they have. There is one person, I don't know her name, but um, uh, Willie Danlico has resigned without putting his resignation in to the town of Hadley mm -hmm. so that people didn't know that we knew he resigned, but other people didn't know. And there are, how many people on the board? Right There's three. It's pretty small. And Amherst took over from what we understand, because Hadley is small and the state, the Department of Housing Community Development is the one that accepted Amherst as our now <laughs> to, to manage Hadley. Correct. And it's, it's pretty poor. It's pretty poor. So let's, let's, let's think about getting back how we can manage our own residents, um, even though that it's overseen by the state. Let's see how we can work to uh, change things or make things better. As Jane being our representative, maybe we can uh, do a little bit more and see what we need to do. That'd be great. That'd be great. All right, let's work towards that. Anything else on Golden Court? All right, uh, Carolyn, can you do an administrator update in about four minutes? She left the meeting. <laughs> she left. Sorry, I was telling you it wasn't gonna be long, but since you weren't gonna hear it, if I kept oh. it muted, but really <laughs> quick, I just updated two schedules. One was for the special town meeting, um, just updated a couple of dates for that. It is still October 21st but um, just some other deadlines. Um, and that's in your board docs, as well as your select board schedule. In October, I had to add a meeting uh, the week before special town meeting, because you looks like you typically do not meet the night before, um, but the way you meet the first and the first, I did third, I needed to sneak another one in there for um, uh, just for the, the public forum to talk about the uh, special town meeting. And quickly, Sheriff, I'm going to get his name wrong. I hope not. Um, Kay Helene, um, okay. our New Hampshire County Sheriff, he stopped by the police department and uh, the town hall to let them, to let us know that because of some budget adjustments, they were able to give back 4,000, almost, almost $5,000 back to the police department budget um, for money they did not spend or need to spend for, um, we use the sheriff, uh, allows us to um, house the prisoners that can't set, can't meet bail. So he houses those prisoners for Hadley um, and mm -hmm. was able to give us some savings. So um, I wanted to share that with you. And I did want to ask, um, and maybe we can do it at the next select board meeting, unless you can do it in two minutes, but we have been rehiring and replacing positions um, that I, I did come to my attention that the select board had put on a uh, hiring freeze during uh, FY 20 and 21 because of the COVID, um, how it impacted the budget. Um, but we have been replacing positions and we need to replace three more positions in different departments. So I just want to have um, the select board at some point rescind that. I don't know if you can fit that in or not, but I do need to have you rescind that vote. Can we, can we now um, take that freeze off of um, a hiring freeze? I would like to make a motion to take that motion off of the hiring freeze so that we can fulfill our obligations in the departments that you feel need these positions. I'll second that. Motion by Joyce, second by Amy. Any other discussion on this? What positions are they? Right now, conservation, recreation, and the fire department. Sounds good. Those, those were existing positions that just became vacant. Right, but the, the, the way a hiring freeze, the way it was worded was, even if someone left, those positions can be rehired. That was what was, was explained to me. Correct. Okay. So I did it. it. 
Post when it. They, oh, did you guys vote? No. Not yet. Not yet. All right, Jennifer. <laughs> Roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalu? Yes. Muscovitz? No. Parsons? No, John. What the? I'm just kidding. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. And that's seven o'clock. All right. Yes. Perfect Bingo. timing. We'll roll into uh, the seven o'clock appointment. FY 2021 Hadley Community Development Fund application public hearing. Uh, do I need to read all of this or no? You, I, it's up to you, but you don't on for okay. my my purposes. All right, as long yeah, that's fine then. I'll, okay. I'll skip that. It's on board docs. Um, and is who's here? Yeah, to Ted's talk about here. It? Ted, Ted's here. Okay. I'm here. Great. Ted, if you want to take it away, go ahead, please. Yep, I will try to be brief um, because this for um, I'm actually not sure who was on the board last year, um, but this is a um, somewhat of a repeat uh, from last year's um, uh, public hearing. So just quickly, um, my name is Ted Harvey. Um, I'm with the Community Development Department at the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, we um, run and administer many um, and have for the past 30 odd years um, community development block grant programs um, throughout Pioneer Valley and actually in the Worcester County as well. Um, and so um, Hadley was, is a town that has been interested in the past and has received funding, um, not for some time now, but um, has received funding in the past. Um, and I, I know there has been interest and we're hoping that um, this year we are, are successful. Um, so this is a uh, one of two required public hearings for this particular program. Um, the second would happen if uh, the town was funded um, and that would happen way down the road, but there is a required public hearing um, to garner input from the public, uh, from the select board and whoever else might um, want to offer um, input. So that's what this particular public hearing is. Um, like I mentioned, this is, um, so, so we worked, uh, my colleague who was actually no longer um, at the PVPC, um, worked with the town, worked with Carolyn last year um, on this. And so we um, unfortunately were not funded. Um, it was, I think the Hadley was like the next town down to um, receive, not receive funding. Um, so it was a very, it was very close. Um, so we, we did end up getting some feedback from the state. Um, this goes through the Department of Housing and Community Development, the HCD. So we received um, some feedback from them. Um, you know, with that feedback, some tweaks, um, there, wasn't, there wasn't a ton um, uh, but every tiny little thing is um, really impactful. Um, so I, I think it will be a stronger application this year. Um, so so I, I'm bringing that up to, to reiterate that this is basically, um, we're looking at a rewrite for anyone who was um, familiar with last year's application. We're looking at a, a, a rewrite and a resubmittal, um, basically. So um, I'm going to, um, so there's a couple of changes. I'm going to Carolyn, I think I have access to share my screen. Um, I'm gonna try that. If it doesn't work, I'll go through this, but um, so let's see if this works. Cause I just want, can you guys see that? That word document? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, great, see. great. So um, so this just gives a summary. Um, again, if, if you were um, aware of this program last year, it's very similar. I do wanna, um, I'll go through it all, but I want to point out some um, slight modifications. Um, so you'll notice that South Hadley is, is included. Um, uh, one last year was just a Hadley alone application. Um, South Hadley has had um, successful applications in the past. Um, they're current, they just received funding for this past year. Um, they're, uh, without getting into too many technical details, um, they're, um, uh, every town kind of starts off with a particular score um, and those communities with higher um, low, basically a higher low and moderate income uh, population have a higher score, which um, helps in these particular um, grant applications. Um, so South Hadley happens to have a higher um, need score than Hadley. They're also um, not at a position that they could apply fully for a full application. And so we, um, thought that this would be kind of a good um, 
you know, uh, a, a regional application. What that means for the town of Hadley isn't very much except that um, I, it will actually um, somewhat benefit the application um, process because the, the overall score will, that initial score will be averaged. Um, and so that would be a benefit. Um, it would, when I say a regional application, it doesn't mean that um, there's any kind of regionalization or anything like that. We just happen to be applying with one application. Um, so I'll just briefly go through this and then I'm gonna make sure there's time for questions. Um, so the housing rehabilitation program is the main um, component of this. Um, and we're um, in the last year's application, we asked for um, a, a lot, quite a number of units. I wanna say 10 or 12 units to, um, to, to do. Um, this year, it's gonna be much smaller. We're just gonna go for a, a smaller program, kind of get our feet wet with Hadley, um, get our foot in the door and then down the road. If it's successful, we can build on that. Um, I can go more over the housing rehab program, but um, it's something that PVPC has run for many years, uh, 30 odd years um, with towns throughout the, um, the Pioneer Valley. Um, but you can read that as I scroll slowly. Um, the second thing is, again, this is from last year's application, is the accessibility. So oh, let me back up real quickly. So the housing rehabilitation program um, would also include um, some units in South Hadley. So that's kind of really where the overlap is. Um, so it would be a small number in um, maybe three or four units um, uh, in South Hadley, and then the remaining would be in Hadley um, itself. Um, so the second one, second project is the accessibility planning project transition plan. Um, so um, again, without getting into too many technical details, um, there's a, there's a newish requirement for CDBG applications that if the town does not have an ADA plan, um, that we have to note that. And then at some point the state would contact you and uh, they would work with you. It wouldn't be necessarily an unfunded um, mandate, but um, the goal would be to get the town to have one. So this would kind of meet that, that goal. And it's important to have one anyway. So um, that, that would be the second thing. And again, this was on last year's application. Um, this, um, the, <sighs> this is not a scored piece, so it doesn't actually really count towards our final application score. Um, it just is kind of like a pass fail, again, without getting into, I can get into more details if anyone has questions, but grant application wise, it it's doesn't really affect um, the overall score. And the final thing I wanna spend just a little more time in, on is this aging in place program. Um, and this one was not part of last year's application. And I think it's a, a really, um, it'd be a really good one for the town of Hadley. Um, it's similar to our housing rehab program. And we started it only a few years ago with the town of Agawam, and we, we now um, have one going on in the town of East or the city of East Hampton. Um, and so it's it's again, it's kind of like the housing rehab program, and it's run through the same you know our same staff and many of the same processes. The difference is rather than a deferred payment loan um, of up to thirty five or forty thousand dollars for kind of more major um, pieces. It's, it's a $5,000 grant. Um, it's for seniors only. So it would be 65 and older. Um, and it really is the purpose is kind of a um, quicker um, uh, items that would allow a, someone to live in their home a little longer. Um, so there's some things mentioned in this um, grab bars, um, some smoke and carbon monoxide detectors, that type of stuff. Um, so smaller, th much smaller things than actually an actual rehab project. Um, and we've had pretty good success with this in Aguam and East Hampton. And it's, um, I don't think any, many other towns, if any, are doing this, but um, this seems to be a pretty popular one, um, particularly in many of our towns um, out this way where, you know, we do have a, sometimes have an aging population. Um, so the next piece is that you can hopefully see is the um, proposed budget. So um, you can review that. Um, that's up for change. That's kind of where we're at right now. Um, the you'll see the um, housing rehab is ten units. That's divided between the two towns, roughly six in Hadley, four in South Hadley. Um, uh, the delivery costs that you'll see there is that's the piece that we actually um, use to run that particular program. Um, so that's the same all the way through. Um, so the ADA obviously are piece of that is much smaller. Um, 
and then the aging in place. Um, again, that's 15 units is what we're looking at. That might shift a little bit, but those, those are again, small grants. And I want to re reiterate, those are grant, that's an actual grant program. So it would not be um, any kind of repayment, whereas the housing rehab is a deferred payment loan program. Um, the administration, um, we are allowed um, up to 15%. We're looking at about a 10% admin. Again, this can be tweaked a little lower, higher, depending on how the town feels is appropriate. Um, and, and then our total budget there is 558,000 and change. Um, so just a, one or two more things. Um, uh, we, I will say we are eligible to go up to more than this um, with two towns, we're actually eligible to go up to a million dollars application. Um, and in past, um, uh, let's see, how do I say this? Uh, I'd rather have a good application with less money than try for that million dollars. And, and after a year, we're really struggling to spend it. So not having had um, CDBG funds in town for some time, I think, I think the best route to go would be a smaller application this round see how, make sure we're, everything's, um, you know, everything's working. And then in future rounds, you know, we could look for more money. Um, it would allow for, if we were to apply next year, for instance, um, you know, the town would be eligible for, um, if it was this, we'd be eligible for actually up to $800,000. So um, it, it wouldn't prevent you down the road from um, applying for more funding. Um, let's see, what else? The, uh, oh, oh, and the final thing I just want to note is the, um, at the bottom there, the timeline um, normally, and again, for those of you who are on the board or at this meeting last year, um, you may remember that it was a March deadline um, and that had, has been shifted all around now um, for COVID and, and um, so it's now September 10th. So a little more than a month, um, the application is due. Um, and then the timeline from then, my guess is that it would be about a three month period based on past history. Um, so we would probably know the town would know holiday time around um, and would almost definitely be a January 1st contract, um, uh, an 18 month contract starting January 1st. I'm gonna stop there. Um, I'm happy to answer, just wanna make sure I cover, yeah, okay. Um, happy to answer any questions. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, um, but I can share it again if people wanna look at this. So I know there's a lot there, happy to answer anything. Um, again, for those who were on the board last year or who had this last time around, uh, it's very similar to um, what the town applied for last year. So I'm all in support of this because the uh, position we took about having an age-friendly community, this fits right into it. It's really important and it doesn't cost the town anything. Well, um, I was on the board last I don't have a problem. I think we should continue the program. Yeah, I Make think motion to continue the program. I think yeah, we I'm the only new one. one. You're new. Yeah, yeah Amy. Only new one. Do you want to take, take some time to look it over? Uh, no. Do we okay. need to take any action tonight, or is this just a hearing to put it out there before submitting? This is just a hearing to put it out there. Uh, you know, some boards in the past have... Um, to support this, you have made a motion and, and voted to support this the application. Um, you know, then it will be in the minutes. Um, I, I mean, again, it's as, it's a public hearing, so that's really the purpose of it. But it's it's up to you how you want to. Well, I think Joyce made a motion. I, I, I think. Do we have to? Um, I'm fine with voting on it tonight if it's possible. But do we have to allow um, time for public comments on it? Yeah, if there, I, I would, if there are any public comments here, uh, you mean beyond this meeting or mm -hmm. tonight? Like if there's like another, if like this was mostly the presentation and then the next meeting, there would be public comment time for it or not? No, so for the purposes of this particular grant, this would be the time for the, any, okay. any public comments. All right, so we've got a motion by Joyce, second by Jane. I'll leave that on the table for now, but I see that there's a few other people here. Is anybody... Uh, Molly, are you here for to speak on this? Um, sure. Yeah. So just, um, sure. you know, as a member of the Hadley Housing and Economic Development Committee, um, certainly want to support um, this initiative. 
I think, again, it falls in line with um, many things that we're trying to do and uh, particularly love the rehab um, aspect of it. So I think this is a very positive thing and I'm glad that the, um, I'm hopeful that the full board will support this. Sounds good. Actually, we've applied for this in the past, probably over the last three to five years. And I knew we had uh, some handicapped accessible ramps built for some folks and, and a few other uh, improvements on their homes so they could live in it. So we've been through this before a few times. Is anybody else here from the public uh, wanting to make comments on this topic? If you are, turn your camera on, wave at us, let us know you're here. Anybody see anybody I'm missing? No. Okay. All right, well, uh, unless Ted has anything else, um, Jennifer, roll call. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thanks, Ted. There must be a pet time. Like, <laughs> my dog, this is the first time he's ever come up here when I've been in a meeting. Sorry. <laughs> and I see James <laughs> Kitty. I don't know what he's doing. He's like, <laughs> hi, <laughs> gosh. What kind of dog is it, Amy? Um, he is a German Shepherd Husky Lab. Oh, he's nice. eleven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, any unanticipated business for tonight? Okay, and then uh, John. Yeah. Did, did uh, everybody read the letter from Joe Comfort on the mosquito control? Yes. I probably yep. said it in public comment, but all the applications that had come in, uh, I wish we can, if Joe could release that to the papers, because uh, the state, of course, uh, accepted some of the applications for opt out and denied a lot of applications for opt out because they're between medium and high risk for triple E. So. I, I think we should uh, ask her to, to release that to the newspaper uh, if it's possible. So are we medium or high risk or where do we stand? I, I don't know. I really don't know. But uh, with this weather we've been having, we've had over a foot of rain in July. So I would imagine whatever plans that, that we were looking for, I'm sure there's water standing everywhere right now. Yes. All right. Uh, any announcements for this evening? I just have one. Uh, we, we, the select board, would like to send our sincere condolences to John Michkowski Sr. and his family on the passing of Nancy. Um, she was a very sweet person, um, very active, um, doing many things in the community with Young Men's Club and other things and enjoyed life on the river. So our certainly our condolences to their whole family. All right. Any other announcements? No. All right. Then uh, I guess our next meeting is the 18th since we don't need to have one next week now. And uh, Yay! Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn, do you, do you want to touch on the water or the sewer real quick, just so, because we talked about doing a public oh. hearing, but we're not quite ready for that? Sure. I can give you an update of where we're at. Uh, so we have been meeting consistently with um, our in-house finance team, taking a look at water and sewer. And we have there's um, a lot of information, a lot of factors. We feel strongly that if we wait until the second uh, uh, quarter for usage, We'll have a much better idea that will help you guys make the decision about uh, a rate increase if needed in how much and how long. So um, if we can wait until the fall to have those meetings, that a hearing, and that will give us more time to give you um, 
real-time information to see how the usage has been and what's predicted in the future and what other factors have impacted it. By waiting until then, it will impact the fourth quarter um, bills, but at, I would really like to see if, if there is whatever decision is made to kind of start for FY23 in the first quarter um, instead of, you know, introducing that at the, uh, at the fourth quarter of this year. So um, that is basically where we're at right now. Um, and I just feel that we can get with more confidence, give you more accurate information to help you guys make that decision if we wait till early fall. And I do have some dates and I can share that with you at the next meeting. I, I think um, a lot of this we need to look at. I would like to rescind that $10 fee that we have applied to non-sewer residents. Um, I think we need to look at this um, seriously uh, and increase fees for sewer consumers. Um, and that's, that's why I feel like you need to have the most accurate information because we're also going to give you an analysis of, of that. Um, mm -hmm. where that fee is going, how it could change, um, and what that would look like. And also if you took it away, what that would look like. So um, if you guys would allow us to just to do, get, gather that information, um, that will be mm -hmm. way more accurate in another month. I, I'm glad to wait on that, but I, I would like to take that under consideration for a mm -hmm. uh, future meeting. So the good news for those watching at home is you won't see any increase until uh, what, uh, July of next year, right? Based on that schedule? Based on that schedule, yes. Okay. A year from now. Right. Okay. For the, last, for the last five years, I've been hearing that we're in deficit, we're in deficit, we're in deficit. And I have still to see any deficit in those uh, figures they all come back with a positive balance every year the physical year so we'll get all those hopefully those numbers for uh, one of our future meetings that carolyn is planning mm -hmm. okay. right but i just wanted to give everybody an update on that since we we said we would talk about it on the 18th but now we're not going to do that on the 18th so in case you were eagerly awaiting a sewer hearing um okay. So we'll, we'll work on other things for the, for the 18th. But um, if there's no uh, further announcements, if I could get a motion to adjourn. So move. Right. Second. Right. Right. Motion. Amy. Motion. <laughs> motion by Joyce, second by Amy. And Jennifer, roll call. Roll call vote Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Chungalo. Yes. Muscavitz. Yes. And Parsons. Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right, good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Enjoy. Good night. Enjoy.